Time lapses. Hey guys, my name is Johnny and today I want to show you how you can make your very own cinematic time lapses right in Filmora Pro. We'll go over some shooting basics, a walkthrough on how to assemble your time lapses in Filmora Pro, and finally we'll show you some really cool tricks to make your time lapses extra dynamic. So let's start by showing you the basics of shooting a time lapse. While it's true you can create time lapses by speeding your footage up, this isn't necessarily the best way to do it. For one, it takes up way more space than it needs to since you're only using a fraction of that footage in the end. And second of all, you lose out on things like image quality and motion blur. So instead of speeding up your footage, I want to show you how you can professionally capture a sequence of images. To recap from a video I made a little while back... To shoot a time lapse on a DSLR, you'll need three things. You'll need your camera, your tripod, and something to tell the camera to take a sequence of photos with. On some cameras, there are apps that can do time lapses. On others, you'll have to use a certain item called an intervalometer. An intervalometer lets you tell your camera how often it should take a photo, whether that be once every second or once every five seconds. The key to shooting time lapses on DSLRs is to switch to manual mode and stick with your settings. I recommend lowering your ISO, closing your aperture, and lengthening your shutter speed to get some nice smooth motion. Some people will use ND filters to shoot even longer exposures. Next, we'll take our intervalometer and set a time interval for our photos. I've set three seconds over here, and we're gonna start the time lapse. For me to get a 10 second video out of this, I'm gonna have to let this roll for about 12 minutes. So I'm gonna go inside and grab some hot chocolate. Now, one thing to note is that if you're shooting a bunch of photos with a DSLR, make sure that you're shooting in JPEG mode, not RAW. Most video editors, including Filmora Pro, don't support importing RAW photo formats. So if you shoot RAW, you'll have to import it into some photo editing software and process it there. So to save yourself a lot of time, I recommend shooting JPEG. You're also gonna save a lot of space that way. Speaking of which, let's import our shots into Filmora Pro. If you shot your time lapse with an app on your phone, you can simply import your clip into Filmora Pro normally. But if you took a bunch of pictures with a DSLR, you can import your time lapse by importing an image sequence. Go to this arrow beside Import and click on Image Sequence. I've got my sequence of shots in this folder here. I want to export my time lapse at 24 frames per second, so I'm going to have to change the clip and project settings to match that. First, let's go to the gear to the right of our new imported image sequence and set the frame rate to 24 frames per second. Next, let's click this gear by the top of the editor and set the project frame rate to 24 frames per second and set our project resolution to 3840 by 2160. Let's drag our time lapse into the timeline. Now chances are that if you shot on a DSLR, your image sequence might be higher resolution than 4K, meaning it will look zoomed in here. You can fix this by right clicking on your clip and going to Transform, Fit to Frame Width. The last thing we can tweak with assembling this time lapse is to do color correction. In my case, I'll add a hue, saturation, and lightness effect and dial up the saturation a bit. Next, let's drop on one of Filmora Pro's built-in LUTs to make this look a little more interesting. I really like the way Batman looks, so I'll dial it in at about 75%. Now go ahead and export it, and you've got a time lapse. Now if you want to do any other fancy effects to your time lapse, I recommend you first export it, since the playback of the high-res image sequence will be pretty slow. Let's click on Export Contents and go for Large Size, Best for UHD, which will give us a high-quality 4K export of our time lapse ready to upload or plug back into Filmora Pro for more edits. Now, if you're on a Mac and you're only exporting this time-lapse to re-import it into another project file, a great option is ProRes 422 HQ. This will preserve even more quality, though be warned, the file sizes can get pretty big. So you've exported your time-lapse and it looks like this. And hey, that's pretty good. But let's say you want to add a little extra dynamic punch to your shots. Let me show you some tricks you can do right here in Filmora Pro. So for this effect, you can re-import the time-lapse file you exported into a new project. This time, we'll make the project settings 1080p at 24 frames per second. Because our time-lapse was exported at UHD, which is twice the height and width of 1080p, we can zoom in up to 200%. 
In fact, if we drop our time-lapse file into the project right now, it will already appear zoomed in. Let's zoom it back out by setting the scale to 50%. Alright, so this is a pretty simple animation you can do in the controls panel. Let's say we want to start our time-lapse zoomed in on me sitting over here. This is actually me taking another time-lapse with another camera. It was a pretty productive day, I would say. Let's start zoomed in on me, and then zoom back out for the full frame of this time-lapse. To do this, I'll go to the end of the clip, make sure to display the timeline up here in the controls panel, and then create a position and scale keyframe right over here. And drag it right to this border between the lighter and darker areas. Then let's go back to the start, and automatically set new scale and position keyframes by adjusting both of them to get the zoomed in frame. Try not to go past 100%, otherwise you may lose some resolution. Now when we play back this clip, we'll get a nice gradual zoom added to our time lapse. Let's say we wanted a more sudden zoom out, by holding on our zoomed in frame and zooming out halfway throughout the video. We can do this by going to the controls panel and bringing the keyframes closer together. Let's also select them all and click this filled in diamond up here to toggle smooth keyframes. Finally, let's go up to our clip properties and check motion blur. Now, when we play this back, we'll get an abrupt but somewhat natural looking zoom. And I'll go to the graph editor and really dial in the velocity curve on this motion. I'll hold shift to drag these beziers over here. And there we go! Those were some tips on how to get started with your very own time lapses in Filmora Pro. Are there any other techniques you'd like to learn? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And remember, there's no limit to what you can create.